I don't know about you, but I am tired of paying for streaming services at this point. And no, I'm not gonna do the thing that you think I'm gonna do and say, go out and pirate your media. I would never advocate for piracy. You may not think so, but you can own your own media without pirating. There's this ancient technology that I used to use. It's called the compact disc. We used to put them in these large boxes and they would play pictures on the screen, moving pictures. And they've almost gone extinct because of the introduction of digital media. But what if I told you, you can extract those files from those old DVDs and Blu-rays and put them onto your media server to watch whenever you wanted within your house or remotely. Now one media server software that I'm really interested in is called Jellyfin. I was a big Plex fan, but I've kept getting people in my ear talking about Jellyfin. People at work, people on forums, and now tons of content creators are making videos about switching over to Jellyfin. So I think it's unavoidable at this point. But I want you to come with me on this journey while I build this Jellyfin server. So I'm gonna give you four reasons why you should build one. Let's get started. The first reason is gonna be cost savings. You can take all those monthly subscriptions, throw them out, and replace that with just physical copies of the media that you want. Box sets of your favorite TV shows, Blu-rays of your favorite movies, that's gonna replace the cost of your monthly subscription service fees. And of course the upfront cost of the server, which in my case, I'm using an old laptop hard drive that I've extracted, and a Raspberry Pi 4, which if you know, is not very expensive. So cost is relatively little to get started, and then it's kind of pay as you go. The next reason is gonna be flexibility and control. And by that I mean when you log in, you'll have everything laid out exactly the way you want. You could have your favorite movies here, your favorite TV shows here, and of course it's your media and it'll stay there as long as you want, and won't just vanish out of thin air, <laughs> Netflix. The next reason is gonna be something you didn't think of, and that's streaming performance. Now how can a little Raspberry Pi outperform the giant infrastructure that big companies like Hulu and Netflix have? That's because your media server is being hosted within your local network. So you don't have to go out to a cloud server to get your media back into your house. It's already in your house. You are the source. So as fast as packets can travel on your local network is as fast as you can stream within your local network, which is at least a gigabit for most network interfaces. Now think about how long it takes for you to go out to Netflix's servers and pull that video back in and how it congests all that other internet traffic that's trying to make its way out and in as well. If people are also watching Netflix in other rooms, gaming and you know all sorts of other stuff. This is being hosted in your local network, so you don't have to worry about that. And the next reason is just one more principle. Now that you own your media, you also own your user data as well. And that's one of the most important things from these streaming services. Yeah, your 10, 15 bucks a month keeps the servers running, keeps the lights on, but the really important information is your user data. I'm not going conspiracy theorists with this. I'm not going email address, phone number address. I'm more talking about your viewing habits. They wanna know who, what, when, why, and how you're watching your media. That information is way more important than your 10 or 15 bucks a month. That information tells them how to invest for the upcoming media on their streaming services. User data dictates almost all those decisions. But if you're interested in owning your own media like I am, come on, hop aboard the pirate ship.